Well, good evening. Just wanted to do a quick video on uh, uh, some uh, DC load or some uh, RF loads that I've got, uh, 50 m loads. Uh, I picked up an 85032E, uh, which is the economy uh, type N calibration kit uh, off eBay to help uh, calibrate my uh, uh, network analyzer. I have an 8714C uh, economy network analyzer. And so the economy kit is uh, more or less uh, acceptable for that. Uh, what you have here is a, a classic combined uh, Agilent uh, open short, and you can see that here, open short. And then you have a 50 ohm, uh, if we go up here you'll see, uh, 50 ohm precision load, this is a 909F and uh, all end type. Now these are well characterized, so the, the network parameters of these are known in terms of delay, reflection, resistance, frequency response and so on. And so I can put those parameters in as a set of known uh, standards into the network analyzer and then I can use this to create a reference plane that I would then go and uh, analyze my uh, devices from. But I didn't want to show you the, the kit, what I wanted to do was to, to show you the loads. And so what I have here, and this is my, this is the 909F, um, I also have two of these loads here and here you can see uh, these are uh, little HP uh, 909A loads and they're 50 ohm uh, uh, loads. So what you can do is you can look to see the, how the, the loads are good. Now these are actually all good, all three of these are actually all good to uh, from DC to 18 um, uh, gigahertz. Now unfortunately, you know, because I have an economy uh, network analyzer and I really don't do any work above uh, you know, 2.4 odd gig about above Wi-Fi sort of levels. Uh, I didn't really uh, see the need to get a, a better network analyzer. Uh, but uh, uh, what I do, you know, can do is look to about uh, three gigahertz. So when you put one of these devices onto a, a network analyzer and tell it to look at the reflected uh, signal, basically what you're doing is looking for the standard wave ratio, and the standard wave ratio tells you. Uh, what the voltage is based on how well the load matches uh, the output impedance of, uh, of your device. So in a 50 ohm world, if you had a perfectly matched 50 ohm load, then you would have a standing wave ratio of 1 to 1. There'd be basically no reflected wave. Uh, and you can go look up uh, uh, the standing wave ratio and so on and see that, and see what that means in terms of... Uh, 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 of antenna theory and so on, but fundamentally, um, you know, what it does is it tells me whether or not uh, the load is matching the impedance that's expected at a particular frequency because I can look to see what the reflective wave is. So if we go and have a look at uh, the specifications, you can see the specifications, and I'll bring this, bring this over. You can see the specifications here for, uh, let's zoom in a bit, you know, for the um, uh, 909F and let's just get that in so you can see that. So the 909F that I have, uh, option 12, which uh, is this guy here, um, you know, you're going to see that uh, uh, from DC to 2 gigahertz, basically I should have uh, standing wave ratio of 1.007, up to 3 gigs 1.01, .01, and up to 6 gigs at 1.02. So basically pretty flat. And if we look at the, if we now go back and look at the the little diagram that I have that shows the uh, SWR uh, view for that load for this guy, you can see that basically a very close flat line around one, so well below what uh, the actual specifications were, which was, you know, uh, out to a, a 1.01 um, or 1.07 up to that area. You can see very, very close. So it's 1.01 and 0.01 on the other side. So, uh, you know, it should be pretty good, uh, pretty accurate there. Now, when we look at the other loads, and that's these guys here, these 909As, if you go and have a look 
uh, here at the coefficients, um, what you can see is on the 909A, uh, from DC to 4 gigahertz, I should have, oops, sorry for option 12, because these are uh, n-type, uh, I should have DC to 4 gigahertz, and I should have an SWR of 1.06, um, or less. So that would tell me that from DC to 4 gigs, these things, the impedance in this is going to be about, um, it's going to be 50 ohms or not. So this was the graph that I had for this load here, and this is uh, load 1. And you can see that, you know, I should have been under 1.06 and 1.06 is way the hell off the graph here so basically up to 3 gigs this is a pretty much spot on 9099A however when I went and looked at my load 2 what you can see here instead is this guy starts to basically go and it uh, get very close to 1.06 and I suspect that on that uh, increase it's going to keep on going across 1.06 now technically yes it could possibly have a like have a wave and go under and, and that but I think you pretty much find that you know if you look and compare the other graphs that you know you saw where it's going to be flat where it's basically going to be flat this is indicating that there's something is wrong with this um, something is wrong with this load now I asked about this on the forums and people the, the, the feedback I got is that it might uh, in fact somebody might have repaired this they might have blown the resistor and replaced it now uh, uh, there's no real you know I haven't had anyone that said I've opened them up and I've seen stuff so given that uh, it's pretty much not useful to me because this SWR uh, when I put these loads on will load out will, will create problems in measurements uh, because you know I'm going to be using this to try and zero things for measuring SWR I don't really have much to lose by disassembling it and, and taking a look at it so let's uh, go ahead and see what would happen when uh, I, I disassemble this So I'm going to the pin, and the, the pin, if you look at it, looks. Uh, oh, do I lose the little uh, crap, the little cap there? That basically the, that little cap. Uh, if you can see this, the little cap there fits inside this, and it's going to push against. Bar in there, so I need to get. Okay, there we go. I think I've got that. Back. At least it looks a bit springy again. Okay, now this looks like it is completely. The manual says there is absolutely nothing serviceable uh, by the user in these, and. I would not disagree. It looks like there's like a, a little index there, which I would not be surprised if there was some uh, tool that went over, you know, and then you screwed in like a, a lock point that gave you the capability then to turn it and get it out uh, of the the shield there. Let's, there we go. So I've never taken one of these apart. But it looks ah, 
Okay, I don't know. Oh. It does not appear to be any. Uses serviceable parts in here. That's so you can see, I wonder if you can see in here, you know, a little torn off item. I wonder if this has something to do with that. Zoom this out a little bit more. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but this looks like a little bit of like nichrome or, or something like that. You zoom in a bit. You yeah, know, let's get that, get the macro going. You can see there's like, I think, I tried, you know, it looks like it's come off one side of that. Looks like it's come off one side of this. Uh, substrate in here and you know so it normally would come around uh, and touch the other the other side so I just tried to get it to, to zoom back out a little bit I just tried to sort of bend it down and see if like I can create uh, a little contact over the edge there and then just simply slide this in you know because you would expect that if this was as simple as just simply pushing this together like this this is actually how they would build these things and so clearly that isn't the case so now let's drop that end in there let's screw this back down again let's drag over the EV blog uh, meter I'm trying to help Dave out uh, there so you know, zero so let's uh, let's get in and see if I see whether or not that made a difference no whatever I, whatever's going on here I don't particularly want to take uh, this guy apart and take a look at it really doesn't seem to have done much much good at all so let's see what happens if I take that thing out completely Oh, 
Uh, interesting. Took that out completely and it's 51.2. Hmm. Hang on. Let me go stick it on the network analyzer. Well, there we go. I think that uh, what we got out of this was a, a little tear down. Uh, more so than an actual uh, repair. So if we come in and have a look here, you know, we can see some of the components. There's a little spring, there's a little uh, post. This is the pin. You can adjust where that is on the pin to set the pin depth as it will appear in here. There is some additional components here. And then there's this interesting piece here. And this is going to be the actual load. And you can see the that I think this little sheet of nichrome has come off, has delaminated from it. And, you know, had a little, as you can see, there's like a little piece missing here. And there was a little piece on the edge, you know, and if I just bring that, scroll it in, come on. You can see just there, that little piece broke off this when I took it out. This was actually sitting outside of the thing, so it's come out and worked its way completely around or something. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, I think if, we, you know, that's probably the, the issue. So, this uh, is really just a set of spares. So, I don't know if the, you can get a replacement inset for uh, the parts. I think it's off to uh, Keysight to see if they sell a replacement piece. And uh, then we'll make the change. Anyway, you now know what's inside a HP 909A um, uh, load. Hope you found that interesting. Catch you later. Bye.